1990, after three election victories and 11 years in power, Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher stood on the brink of a startling reversal of fortunes. Our play this afternoon blends fact and fiction to explore the effect of this critical period on the lives of the key players. Everything all right, darling? Fine, any old plate. Hmm, didn't think we had any old plate. A Family Affair by Michael Dobbs. It really is sweet of you, darling, to come over and make dinner for us. I simply can't remember the last time we did this together. What a pity Mark couldn't be with us. With Claire Higgins as Margaret Thatcher and Stephen Moore as Dennis Thatcher. What's on the menu, Poppet? Melon in port, followed by a bit of beef. Exquisite melon, love. Where'd you get it? Sainsbury's. And the, um, port? Found a whole case of it back of the kitchen cupboard. That was a gift from the President of Portugal. You've just poured history all over a chunk of melon. So, what are you two thinking of doing for Christmas? We were rather hoping you and Mark might be able to join us. That old car of yours still giving you grief, Poppet? Why is it that every time I mention Mark's name, you are... Yes? Uh, very well, I'll take it in the study. I'm sorry, it's President Bush. Well, can't it wait, love? Dennis, we're just about to go to war with Iraq. I think that should be slightly higher up on the list of priorities, don't you? Um, better shove that beef back in the old oven, then give it half a chance of being done properly. That man! He is rather set in his ways, Prime Minister. Wretched fellow! But you think it went all right in Cabot, Brian? Of course, Prime Minister. We weren't too rough with him. Never. In any event, Geoffrey Howe's an old warship, accustomed to a little choppy water. He'd better take care he doesn't run aground. Prime Minister, you're not thinking... What? Of sacking him? Hmm. He's the last one left from that first cabinet in 79, Brian. Apart from yourself? Well, of course, apart from me. And I, I suppose it might look a little messy if you were to sack the only survivor, particularly when we're just about to let the dogs of war. And since when have we worried about appearances? Look, I, I just think... Yes, tell me. What does the civil service think, Sir Brian? I think your next appointment is waiting, Prime Minister. We don't do this often enough, Brian. Oh, don't flatter yourself, Anthony. I needed to get away. Oh, I see. No, you don't. A fact for which you should be on your knees giving thanks. Oh, what can you get in here, Sir Brian? Whiskey, Mickey. And pour them as though you were tending bar on the Titanic. Mm, sounds like a long day we've been having, sir. Just pour, man. Two Titanics it is, then. Was it that bad? In all my years, I've never known her so carelessly brutal. With Geoffrey? Mostly Geoffrey. She's in so much of a hurry. Never stops to gather friends, let alone take prisoners. Oh, no, it puts up with her. Practice, I suppose. No, not for much longer, I fear. What? Geoffrey jumps ship? <laughs> He wouldn't dare. He was a soul in torment. Here you are, gentlemen. Two Titanics. Uh, ah. Compliments of the lady in the blue dress across the park. Sod off, Mickey. <laughs> or I have you locked up somewhere. <laughs> what? For being Irish? For being the most aggravating bloody barman north of the equator. Well, obviously I bow to your extensive experience, Sir Brian. <laughs> So, what do we do, Brian? What all good civil servants do in a time of political crisis, dear boy. We wait for things to get worse.
You'll have some coffee, won't you? Please, Mum. It was a lovely dinner last week, dear. Oh, the beef was ruined. Oh, I don't know. Your father seemed to enjoy it. It would be nice to sit down and finish a meal sometime. I'm sorry, Carol, but you know how things are right now. The Iraqis invading Kuwait. Half the cabinet losing what little sense they ever had. It's been a particularly busy time. Mum, it's been a particularly busy time ever since we were kids. Look, I didn't ask you ever to have a row. I get enough of those in cabinet. I thought we could have a bit of time together. A girl's hour out. You know, try and make up for the dinner. You could help me sort through my wardrobe. I, I wouldn't know where to start. See if there's any of it we need to get rid of. Mum, if it were left up to my taste, you'd get rid of the whole blimmin' lot. All that stuff wrapped in plastic, labelled with the last time you wore it and where. It's not a wardrobe, it's a ruddy mausoleum. Well, I can see you're not in the mood. Come on, love, sit down. We can chat about plans for Christmas. Yeah, sorry. The cremation wasn't your fault. Blame it on Saddam Hussein, eh? <laughs> I know. We'll ask for reparations. Whatever. And we can... Ah. Oh. oh, dear. Problem? Um, no, not really, except... We seem to have run out of milk. There. Last of the nutters' letters. Will they never stop? The whole world's going mad. Hell bent on revenge. Yeah. Well, that's your function in life as a cabinet minister, isn't it? To be bullied. Mercilessly. <sighs> Don't joke, Chrissy. Not today. Want to tell me about it? Very much. Trouble is, I'm already running late, and I can't do dinner, but later? Later would be fine, if you're sure you can make it. Oh, I'll make it. I need you. What do you do now? <laughs> Putting you down for a little overtime. Bloody reptiles, may they rot. Good evening, Dennis Thatcher. What ho, Governor? Hello, Bill. Thank God it's you. But if you're bringing news hot foot from Fleet Street, no need. I've just read it and rather wished I hadn't. Uh, it's enough to drive you and me to drink. Frequently. Uh, sorry I couldn't make golf today. How'd it go? I barely survived without you, old chum. Didn't manage more than nine holes. Bloody balls kept getting stuck in the mud. A bit like the boss at the moment. Yes. Things do seem uh, a little sticky. You yeah, like the trenches. I don't know how she copes. I, truth is, I, I don't know how you cope, Dennis. Well, you know my motto, old bean, played as though you're thick as hell and hope everyone ignores you. But, well, she can't get away with that, can she? Another of those days, apparently. Iraq is? No, no, the flock. Ah, I take it you mean the cabinet. Yeah, she's curled up on the sofa behind a barricade of ministerial boxes, plotting some heavy pounding. So I'm hiding in the study. You eaten? Not yet. Uh, probably treat myself. Beans on toast, maybe. Fancy an evening at the club. My treat. My friend, I could sink a battleship tonight, but... Oh, I know. Duty calls. One of those evenings. You understand? I'm required on sentry duty. In case the mob tries to storm the palace. It's not the mob out front she has to worry about, Bill. It's those buggers behind her. Mm. Mm. <sighs> Darling? What's wrong? <sighs> Sorry, Chrissy. I feel... Oh, Lord, I don't know. It's like half the world's crowding into this bedroom. You see, he swore me to secrecy. I am the guardian of your most intimate secrets, Minister. It's Geoffrey. He's going to resign. In the morning. Really? Yeah. Well, that's wonderful. I can't blame him. She's been absolutely bloody. 
seems to have a death wish. But you know what that means. Bloody chaos. A leadership challenge. Well, not from Geoffrey. Not even with his wife whipping him on. <laughs> he doesn't exactly have that lean and hungry look, does he? Not John. And not Douglas, either. None of them are up to it. They're all so limp. <laughs> well, that's sort of what she said. In Cabinet. Called us all weary willies. God, really? <laughs> Did she understand what she was saying? No, of course not. A silly woman often doesn't. But, I mean, somehow, that's what makes her so appealing. Her naivety. You sound almost sorry for her. Mm, I could be. I mean, if it weren't for the fact that she's destroying every one of us. Everything we've done together. She's had long enough. And yet... Almost everything I have, I owe to her. Don't do gratitude, darling. It only weighs you down. And she doesn't deserve it. After all, she was the one who picked up the knife and shoved it into Ted. Mm. Not much of a game for loyalty, is it? But if she were challenged now, she'd simply go, wouldn't she, after all this time? Margaret, go quietly. Not in a year of Christmases. This is all she has. Someone has to stand up to her. Heseltine. Oh, Heseltine will. Yes, well, that's my guess. And you'd be happy to play second fiddle to that man. I tried to like him, but somehow his hair keeps getting in the way. You should do it. You must. Me? Of course. You. Who better? After all, darling, no one could call you a weary willy. Not even on one of your off days. <laughs> <laughs> You okay, love? Blithering man. Who, oh dear? Who? How? Geoffrey, you know what he's done? I can't say I do, dear. Resigned. He's just walked out on me. Uh. I gave him everything he's got, every job, every title he's ever had. Well, not quite, dear. I never thought in a thousand years he'd act We're on the brink of a war, and he chooses this moment to abandon his post. It's tantamount to cowardice. Not so long ago, I could have had him shot. Mm -hmm. Possibly a little hard. Sir Dan would be laughing all the way to the oil fields. Here, have this. I don't need a drink. Yeah, well, I do. I asked him to wait, insisted he reconsider, but he wouldn't. Didn't even hesitate. So bloody-minded, his wife must have got at him. Yeah, I can believe that. He was the last, you know. That's why it hurts so. But he'll regret it. Us too, I'm afraid. Us? Well, not so good for Team Thatcher. Makes us look... What? Oh, I don't know. Isolated? Little out of touch? Dennis, I don't need you getting at me, too. You know me better than that, love. What did Winston say? So much to do and so damnably little time to do it. You've got to step back from this. Look at things afresh. I don't have time. Then make it, old love. Make it. Another? Something else Winston said about how he always took more out of alcohol than alcohol ever took out of him. Right now, my thoughts precisely. If at first you don't damn well succeed... Oh, you hit such a fine drive off the tee, Dennis. It's a pity about the bunker. Losing my touch, Bill. Stuff it. That's just distraction. It's written all over your face today. And that's not like you, old chum. We're all getting older, Bill. So, how's it looking? Like a five iron, you mean? No, you fool. How's it looking? Ah, it. Bloody. Distinctly bloody. Yes, that's what I hear. What do you hear, Bill? What's the word in Fleet Street? And the others are threatening to throw their toys out of the pram along with Geoffrey. How many? Too many. Well, you carry on year after year, and they love you all the less. Those you sack, or those you've never employed, those who simply hate you, those who you've forgotten, and the ambitious, and the spineless, of course, never forget the invertebrates. Doesn't seem to leave a lot. You think they'll get her, Bill? Uh, Geoffrey's going to make a resignation statement to the House of Commons. I know she's faced puddings with a tougher skin, but... Yeah, well, truth be told, old chap, she's been three-putting all over the shop. Probably time for her to let the others play through, but you know the boss. 
stubborn. Now, how else could she have kicked the crap out of Scargill and the sodding Argentinians? We needed a warrior, not a wet nurse. But it's all about being in the right place at the right time. It's a bloody game, politics. Well, that's why I stick at this. At least the ball doesn't bite back. Bugger! Spoke too soon. Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. Speaker, that is why I have resigned. And in doing so, I have done what I believe to be right for my party and my country. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 Exquisite view of Westminster from the park, don't you think? Steeples, the cupolas. Look, there's one of Christopher Wren's. Oh, my, the lady was such a pitiful sight. I never knew Geoffrey had it in him. Oh, neither did she. Did you see her? I swear I saw her wince. Everywhere you go now, you find them whispering in corners, looking over their shoulders. But not our Mr. Heseltine, I suspect. He is so wonderfully ambitious. Who'd have thought it, eh? Blonde on blonde. Te morituri, those who are about to die. Hell, is that the time? And back to the cockpit. Oh, and a word of advice. Catch up on Mr. Heseltine's recent speeches. Why, you need to be briefed. Not I. Read them all weeks ago. ...colleague throughout her years in power turned on her in the Commons today and accused her of risk... Is it really that bad, Dad? Has been for some time, Poppet. There you go, knock that back. Got a fair bit of stock to get rid of. No point in leaving it behind. Thanks, Dad. Thank you, darling, for being here when you're needed. Doesn't make things easy for herself, does she? Never has. And for that matter, not for you two kids, either. I got used to it. You two never saw eye to eye. You know, when you were born, you looked like rabbits. I asked for you to be put back. Oh, Dad! Well, it's true, and your mother burst into tears. You made her cry? No, no. But Mark did. Been at it ever since. You know, Poppet, I shouldn't be saying this, but it isn't just politics anymore, you see. It's it's family. And all those exotic friends of his, of that easy money. I knew he'd never make a rugger player, but I'd hoped Harrow might have beaten some sense into him. Oh, it, it's not good enough. Never has been. Not for the Thatcher. We sweat for what we've got. What can we do? For Mark? No, no, for Mum. Apart from persuading bloody Heseltine to take a drive into the desert with your brother, not enough. It can't be that hopeless, surely. I told her to go on her tenth anniversary eighteen months ago. You what? Those were the days when she would have floated away on a cloud with the cheers of the world ringing in her ears, like the bloody ascension. But would she listen? You told her to go? Go out at the top, I told her. Choose your own time. But now... I won't have her humiliated. I'd do anything, anything to stop the press crowing and Ted Heath laughing till his dentures drop. Enemies on all sides and around the cabinet table. Trouble is, Poppet, there are times when your mother's worst enemy stares at her straight back from the mirror. There you are. No, don't get too close, Chrissy. What? Please. Someone might see. I'm your secretary too, remember? Why are you hiding? Not hiding. Thinking. Someone has to. It's all round the corridors. I presume you've heard Heseltine's going to stand. Yes, I've heard. The time's come, hasn't it? Your time? No, um, probably not now. Oh, I think probably now. We missed this chance. It might never come again. We? I didn't come here to polish my nails and bend over the desk for any passing politician. If I had balls, I'd be part of this place, and better than most. And if you have any balls, you'll stand for the leadership. Look, Chrissy. Oh, so with me. Ah, um, that's all right. We were just um, plotting. Everybody's plotting. Downfalls, denunciations, new dispositions. I've been offered three new jobs since lunch. Christmas appears to have come early this year. <laughs> sure. But as I say, uh, 
we were just... Uh... Yeah, trying to escape it all. Yes, yes, I can see that. Well, uh, my apologies for the interruption. Evening, Christine. <sighs> Damn. You are ashamed of being seen with me. Right now, I'm ashamed of being seen with myself. I feel as if I'm betraying my own mother. What's with the guilt trip? Forget you went to Ampleforth. You've grown up. You don't do confession anymore. It's got nothing to do with that. Hasn't it? You're not very good with betrayals, are you? Should I be? It's the game we're playing. Everyone is. Oh. Yes? It's home. Sorry, love. Yes. Yes, yeah, should have called sooner, but you know, it's been chaos here. Look, can you just hang on? Just a sec. <gasps> Damn. 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 Here we go, love. Morning, Kappa. Thank you, darling. You were restless last night. Oh, a pain. I'll get you an aspirin. Dennis. I've come to a decision. So have I, love. I was just saying to Carol... I've decided I'm going to the Paris summit after all. Good God, woman. I've got to. Gorbachev, Cole, George Bush, they're all waiting for me. I can't let them down. There's the water plan. I will not be pushed off course by an upstart like Michael Heseltine. But, sweetie pie... It's the only way. Reduce him to the ridiculous. Standing against me when we're about to go to war... Margaret... Darling, I don't often kick up rough, but you're about to make the biggest balls up in Christendom. There's no need for profanity. Look, woman, you can't go rustling your skirts in Paris when you've got the fight of your life back here, in Westminster. No. Paris. For heaven's sake, you have your supporters. Leave now, and it'll look as though you're simply taking them for granted. What will you have me do? Stay at home and beg? You're fighting for your life, our lives. I won't lower myself. Anyway, I don't think I'll lose. Well, you might, dear. You just might. A precious little point in my wandering round the tea room pretending I'm Mother Teresa. God forbid. They need to see me doing the job I've always done. Leading from the front. Convenient if they want to stab you in the back. Paris. Isn't that where they burnt Joan of Arc? No, that was Orleans. Well, don't suppose you made a lot of difference to her in the end. Dennis. What, my love? Could you get me that aspirin, please? I'll bring a whole bucket full. I only need one. I know. The rest are for me. Here she comes. Prime Minister. I have no sleep. Worry? A toothache, apparently. Oh, why didn't she get it fixed? Can't. She mustn't be seen jumping the NHS waiting list, but neither can she be seen to turn her back on it by going private. So... So, she suffers, and it's our place to suffer with her. Good grief. Time for gentle counsel, I think. Not a crowd, Anthony. Your time. I leave it to you, then. Toodle pip. Hey! Hang on, Brian! Was that Brian despairing? Yes, um... An urgent call he needed to make, Prime Minister. I, I think it's his age. Anthony, my speech. Are we up to speed? I expected it in my box last night. I... we, uh... I mean, I, I, I'm sorry, Prime Minister, it's not quite ready. Not ready? Are you intending to allow me sight of it before I rise to deliver it? But, Prime Minister... I asked you to get Peter to help draft it. What on earth's the hold-up? It's just... Oh, spit it out, man. Don't stand there swallowing frogs. It's the Secretary of State, Prime Minister. Peter? You managed to get hold of him. He's not lost in the jungle, is he? He said the... He said there wasn't any point in... He said... what? His precise words. He said the speech wouldn't make any difference, so there wasn't any point in helping write it. I see. The whole world is waiting for me out there. Presidents, prime ministers, leaders of the greatest nations on earth, waiting for me. And he thinks he knows better. Make sure that speech is in my box tonight. <laughs> Uh, 
Hello? Dad? Mark? Are you still across the pond? Oh, I hear all hell's breaking loose over there. You're almost biblical. Christ. I'd better come home. Uh, no, son, I'm not sure that's a good idea right now. Your mother's got enough on her plate. Just a quickie to say hello. Catch up. Totally private. Mark, nothing in this family is ever totally private. You get spotted coming through Heathrow and the press pack will be straight on your heels. But I want to see Mum. Help her. Listen to me. You suddenly appear out of the blue right now and it'll look like the family gathering around for the reading of the last rites. It hasn't come to that. Yet. Look, Dad, I've got to pop over anyway. See some other folk, you know. Business. Urgent business? Well, you've always got to catch it while you can, haven't you? Uh, look, I've got to fly, Dad. I'll see you soon. Be there for you, too. Mark, I'll call you if you're needed. Do you hear? Mark? Mark! Good God, Bill, I don't know. It's been years since the boss and I had words like that. Well, you mustn't fret, old fellow. Uh, she knows where your heart is. I mean, bound to be a bit of gunfire on the way. You know, a time like this. More like fixed bloody bayonets. I wish I could find the right thing to say. My dear friend, she's in a fight for her life, yet she won't campaign. Instead, she buggers off to Paris. Meanwhile, the prodigal's threatening to fly home and give us all the benefit of his presence. Oh, God. And you think there's a right thing to say? Yes, well, point taken. Uh, but, but you'll survive. I mean, you're the ultimate survivor. Mm. Uh, you up for another nine hells? You know, try and recoup your losses? Uh, my bloody back said it again. Uh, uh, frankly, I'd, I'd rather have the second bottle. What do you say? <laughs> Come on, then. Let's see if we can save the French economy. Mm. Not that the buggers deserve it. Uh, a bottle of 79, perhaps, for old times' sake, eh? Danny! Thanks. Anyway, I suppose the boss still has her friends in Fleet Street. Oh, Dennis, you know as well as I do, there's no such creature as a friend in Fleet Street. Uh, you accepted. Uh, mm. Of course, some of them still support her, don't they? Perhaps, but deep down, what they all want is change. It saves them having to use their imagination. You still use buttons, Brian? Nothing wrong with tradition. Yeah, but these are disrespectful times. And a zip or two will be much faster. Oh, don't be in too much of a hurry, Anthony. So, what happens next? The earth moves, mountains crumble, and we wait. But what about us? We carry on. That's our job, our duty. We put aside our personal feelings. Let's well, sit back and wait for someone to play a rule Britannia. It's usually something Wagnerian. But all your crumbling mountains, Brian, we can't be immune, can we? You and I. We're merely servants. We survive. That's our duty, too. So that we can celebrate the old and guide the new, of course. Yeah, well, not much to celebrate at the moment. Mm, they forget. The days, the years, when the lights kept going out, when flying pickets ruled the land. <laughs> You're getting nostalgic. No, simply remembering, before the shadow of La Passionara fell across the land. I can never work out whether you approve or not. Precisely. Where are you? Kitchen, Poppet. Evening, Dad. What are you up to? <laughs> Just checking to see what's left in the freezer. Don't fancy I'll be going out tonight. Oh, damn it. Finished all the lasagna. I suppose it'll be death by shepherd's pie again. I don't know what you see in lasagna. Your granddad used to say that a man's allowed one prejudice in life without having to explain Come it. Come on, let me help you. Oh, thanks, Poppet. And thanks for coming. Uh, your mother needs her family with her right now. But she's in Paris. Yeah, we're here at home for her. And this isn't home, Dad. Yeah, it, it is for your mum. Mm. Only place she's ever wanted to live. Here and at Chequers. That's why this is the moment we have to stand by her. Oh, Mark's flying over. What? 
Yeah, I know. I couldn't stop him. So that'll be all right, then. Seventh Cavalry to the rescue. If only. <laughs> the result of the ballot for the leadership of the Conservative Party uh, held today on Tuesday the 20th of November uh, 1990 is as follows. Margaret Thatcher, 204 votes. Michael Heseltine, 152 votes. <laughs> there were six abstentions and 17 well, thank God for that, then. A clear victory, more than half the votes. Dad? It's not enough, Poppet. Those figures, they mean half her bloody ministers must have voted against her. But it's a majority. Under the rules of their silly game, she needed 55% to win outright. My reckoning? She's, uh, I don't know, two votes short for want of a nail. Two votes? But surely... There'll have to be a second ballot. Which she'll win, won't she? There's no victory for her in any of this. I don't understand. Uh, neither do I, love.